Welcome to the Bible Forum. I wonder what you were doing last week. Last week when uh, Kanye West appeared with Joel Osteen down there in Texas. Kanye West's new faith-centric album may have surprised some fans, but he said on Sunday at Joel Osteen's church that God has been drawing him into Christian music for several years. He was speaking to a jam-packed Sunday morning service at Houston's Lakewood Church, the mega church where Joel Osteen serves as pastor. Of course, the tickets were free that night as Wes performed a concert at the church. He said, God's been calling me for a long time and the devil's been distracting me for a long time. When I was at my lowest, God was there with me and sending me visions and inspiring me. Some of us would stop right there. You've got an experience with God because you've had a vision. Not a Bible idea. And that God is inspiring me. God convicts sinners of their sin. That could be considered inspiration on one level. But the whole thing sounds like God's been talking to him and telling him things. And that's why he decided to be a Christian. But the Bible says that's reverse. Once you're a Christian, God speaks to you through the Word of God, through the Bible. And God challenges you by His Spirit. It doesn't come the other way. Kanye West referenced a time in 2016 when he was admitted to the Ronald Reagan at UCLA Medical Center for stress and exhaustion. He said it caused the remainder of his 2016 tour to be canceled. I remember sitting in the hospital at UCLA after having a mental breakdown. Your mental never breaks down. <laughs> We're talking about the mind. The mind doesn't break down. It gets confused. You can treat it with drugs and abuse until it reacts strangely. But it doesn't break down. You have to do that. And he says, and there's documentation of me drawing a church and writing, start a church in the middle of Calabasas. Early in 2016, West had released an album entitled Life of Pablo, that at the time he called a gospel album. He says, I didn't know how to totally make a gospel album. The Christians surrounding him in 2016 didn't tell him what he needed to hear, he said. They were beaten into submission by society to not speak up and profess the gospel to me because I was a superstar. But the only superstar, he says, is Jesus. West's latest album is entitled Jesus is King. It was released last month in October. He said he won't be silent about his faith. People tell you to quiet your voice, not talk about Jesus, you know, so loud. But everything else so loud is so loud around us. So for even someone who's professing God and saying this is going to be a gospel album, the devil's going to come and do everything he can to distract people from knowing how to fully be in service to the Lord. West joked about, quote, the arrogance and confidence of cockiness, saying that has helped make him famous. The greatest artist that God has ever created is now working for him, West said. Every time I stand up, I feel that I'm standing up and drawing a line in the sand and saying, I'm here in the service to God, and no weapon formed against me shall prosper. He encouraged the Lakewood Church members and attendees to focus on Christ. Keep your eyes on purity and the love and the grace of God, the grace that allows us to be here today with all our sins. We know that when we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, we will be granted eternal life. A gospel presentation or another look at me declaration. Given the stage, you'd think he'd be more specific about how he was saved, what influenced him, what he was thinking. The gospel he knew, remembered, 
his response to it, the changes that have come into his life. But there was no mention, no allusion to the hearing of the gospel, the renouncing of sin, and the subsequent cleansing that comes with this life-changing event. It's as though he glommed on to God in such a way so as not to interfere too much with his lifestyle. Time will tell. We'll watch him. We'll see which way he's going, how this is all working. But so far, it looks like another stage act. He doesn't know the terminology, biblical terminology. He doesn't seem clear about what being saved is all about. So we'll watch. But he was out there with Joel Osteen. Joel Osteen says he chooses to focus more on the goodness of God and on living an obedient life rather than on sin. You did know the Bible's emphasis is just the opposite, right? The Bible exists to convince people of their sin, the sin of rejecting God, rejecting godless godliness, all due to their sin nature. Otherwise, there's no reason for the crucifixion of Christ. Osteen says that he tries to teach biblical principles in simple ways, emphasizing the power of love and a positive attitude. The Bible teaches us that we have no power of love without Jesus, that we do not have a positive, godly attitude. We're born sinners. Two-year-old children illustrate the principle clearly, consistently. When asked why he does not focus more on sin, the devil, and hell in detail, Osteen stated in an interview with CBN News, when I grew up, the devil was a reason why I had a headache, or the devil was the reason I got mad today. We always blame the devil. Keep in mind, Osteen's father was a preacher, a preacher who did not know what the Bible teaches on this subject. A fundamental theological error passed on to his children. He went on to say, I think today when I say the enemy, I like to make it broader. Sometimes the enemy can be your own thoughts. We trained ourselves the wrong way. Or the enemy can be our own lack of discipline. Our thoughts, wrong training, lack of discipline. These are all products of the sin nature with which we are born. We do not na naturally, natively orient toward God in godliness. And the reason is because we've been born with a sin nature. Now, we don't always sin, but we are always oriented that way as opposed toward God. This preacher don't get it. He don't understand. He went on to say some people Preach about hell like you're already going there. And to me, the gospel means good news. I'd rather say God is a God of mercy. So I think that people already know what they're doing wrong, and I certainly believe in hell. But to me, when I see thousands of people before me, it just doesn't come out of me to say, you guys are terrible and you're going to go to hell. I'd rather say that God is a God of mercy. You've got to live an obedient life. But for every mistake you've made, there's mercy here. And I believe we can do better. The heresy contained in those statements is legion. Human beings are born sinners. Sinners are destined for destruction, for hell. And yes, God is a God of mercy. Mercy withholds what is justly due. But that mercy is found only in the sacrifice of Jesus Christ for our sin. It's not in living a better life, even an obedient life, something no human being can do, not without help. The mercy of God is in that we are not immediately struck dead the first time we commit a sin. And no, we cannot do better in and of ourselves. We are corrupt. It's a false message. Jesus, who had nowhere to lay his head, Osteen, with a net worth reported to be between 40 and $60 million. Now, that doesn't include his wife's net worth, which is not reported. 
He lives with his family in a 17,000 square foot mansion in River Oaks with an estimated value of $10.5 million. I live in a home that is less than a thousand square feet and it is more than sufficient for the two of us. I can't imagine 17,000, that's a museum. As senior pastor Osteen says he draws no salary from the church which has an annual budget of $70 million. Instead he relies on income from book sales. He has a net worth of between 40 and 60 million dollars, not including his wife. Now, other outlets claim he does receive a $200,000 salary from the church, but he gives that salar salary to charity. Can you say tax advantage? Keep in mind, for this $200,000, all he has to do is speak six times a week for 20 minutes each time and that his wife is also a pastor with a salary and books. He clearly does not study the Word of God to better explain doctrines. He clearly doesn't visit his flock of 50,000 souls. He clearly is not available to his flock living in a gated community. And his celebrity keeps him away from his flock. And all of this is just like Jesus. In an interview on Fox News in 2008 during the Republican Party presidential primary race when discussing whether he thought that Mormons were Christians, Osteen indicated that he believed they were. Mormonism is a works righteousness system. Christianity is not. It's that simple. But he doesn't know it. Yeah, he probably does. But it's not positive. It's, you know, I didn't make, that's not a positive statement. I, that's hateful to say that these people are wrong. No, it's truthful. But if they're wrong, then they're not saved. They're not Christians, they're not going to heaven. That's what the Bible says. And it calls all of these people to repent of what they do believe and believe what God believes. You can't do that if you just keep going around saying, well, they're okay. Everybody's the same. Osteen says, I get grouped into the prosperity gospel and I never think it's fair. But it is what it is. I think prosperity, and, and I've said it a thousand times, it's being healthy. It's having great children. It's having peace of mind. Oh, money's a part of it. And I believe God wants us to, to excel. But to be blessed so we can be a bigger blessing to others. I feel very rewarded. I even wrote a book and sold millions of copies and Victoria and I were able to help more people than we've ever dreamed of. Of course, they did keep enough for a $10 million home and a net worth of $60 million. He says, when I hear the term prosperity gospel, I think people are sometimes saying, well, he's just asking for money. No, Joel Osteen does not ask for money, but he does keep writing books. I've written a couple of books. It's, it's a tedious, demanding effort, taking over six months each, minimum. I don't have the schedule he does, traveling, interviews, speaking engagements, public appearances. When I was actively pastoring, it took 20, 30 hours of study, research, writing to produce the three messages a week that I presented. And then it took 10 hours of preaching and teaching and ministering during those three meetings where the messages were presented. It took another 10 or 15 hours to produce the Bible form on radio each week and five hours of actual broadcast time travel, set up, production, post-production, take down, travel home. And for one year, I had two radio programs. The other one was a daily two-hour show. It took every other waking hour to visit, pray, meet, plan, anticipate. And that didn't factor in my family, which I never sacrificed. Oh, and occasionally I slept 
In the last 10 years of public ministry, I spent over 60 hours a week working. Had I been invited to travel or be interviewed as much as Joel, I would have died trying. What I'm saying is Joel Osteen has not, does not study the Bible. What comes out of his mouth demonstrates that. He doesn't even try to teach you anything from the Word of God. His ministry is to the social aspects of people, not their spirit. He is appealing, but he's appealing because of that. Were he to preach the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, you would not know his name. But Joel abandoned the Christianity he knew, which was not the biblical type, for that which appealed to his personality and gifts. And he's been hugely successful, at least as the world judges success. But the final judge is the one we all need to keep in view, and he's not interested in huge crowds. The largest percentage of people who have or are coming to Christ are largely unknown to us, but not to him. And they aren't attending glitzy stage shows. They're bowing their heart in prisons, in desperate situations around the world, exposed to the gospel by unknown, unsung, ordinary human beings who love God more than life itself. Kanye West, Joel Osteen, two of a kind. On opposite ends of that spectrum, but they're basically doing the same thing. It makes sense for Kanye to come and speak on Joel Osteen's TV program. 